In Los Angeles, Eve is taking her children Josh and Izzy to school when suddenly an earthquake hits the area. Huge cracks start breaking down the road, causing a sinkhole to appear and swallow everything nearby. As people panic and fall, Eve's car gets blocked, so the family has no choice but to leave the vehicle and run. Josh can't help stopping to help someone, causing him to fall into the sinkhole, and soon Eve falls into it as well. Izzy grabs her hand to save her, but she isn't strong enough to pull her up and Eve gets swallowed too. Meanwhile Eve's ex-husband Gavin fails to get his pilot job back at the Air Force because since he had an accident three years ago, he started to have weird visions. Soon he gets a call from Izzy and rushes to LA, which now has a huge hole in the middle of the city. He reunites with his daughter as they watch huge birds flying out of the sinkhole. Gavin is in shock because he's seen these birds in his visions. Minutes later, Eve wakes up and remembers falling through a green light. She's surprised to find herself in the countryside, and the green light is up in the sky. There's also a mysterious bloody handprint on a rock, but no signal on her phone. Eve immediately goes looking for Josh, not noticing that she's dropped her wedding ring. Suddenly she sees smoke rising in the distance and runs there, only to discover all the people and things that the sinkhole swallows are now here. After Eve reunites with Josh, the survivors introduce themselves and Sam points out that gathering supplies is the most important thing, so everyone begins searching the area. While Scott and Sam's daughter Riley find recreational powder in the trunk of a car, Josh and Eve are suddenly startled by an angry black wolf that immediately charges at them. The duo tries to run away, only for a second wolf to join the chase. The survivors try to hide inside or underneath cars except for a guy who tries to fight them, but he gets knocked down and dragged away. The other wolf soon catches up to Josh and bites him, so Eve picks up a rock, ready to fight. However the wolf ends up being killed by a shot from Ty afterward. Sam reveals he's a doctor and Riley a med student, so they take Josh to an abandoned bus to look at his injuries. Sam wraps the wound but can't do much without antibiotics and proper tools, so Eve mentions she saw an ambulance fall through the hole and they team up to find it. In the meantime in Los Angeles, Sophia speaks for the Department of Homeland Security, informing the public that there's no plan to send a rescue team, just a military drone to assess the situation. At that moment Gavin has his usual visions, but this time he can see Even and Josh, making him realize that what he's been seeing all these years is the place on the other side of the sinkhole. Sophia and Agent Markman enter the government tent to oversee the drone operation, but as soon as the drone finds the green light, it loses signal. However Sophia remembers a similar green light that appeared in the desert three years ago. At that moment, Gavin has a vision of the drones crashing in the sinkhole, so he approaches Sophia and Markman to tell them about it, using the name of the drone to prove his visions are real yet they still don't believe him. Then Gavin goes home to find a picture of Eve and him in front of the same rock he saw in his visions and decides to visit the place. As soon as he finds it, he starts digging and is shocked to discover Eve's wedding ring, which he shows to Izzy to prove his visions are true. At the same time, Sophia gets a report saying that the birds that came out of the sinkhole are supposed to be extinct but the government doesn't authorize her plan for an exploratory mission. Sometime later, a doctor appears on TV saying that the birds are prehistoric. When Gavin sees this, he pays the doctor a visit and convinces him to carbon date Eve's ring, unaware that two agents are following him. Back in the sinkhole, Officer Marybeth finds a flare gun and shoots it, which is seen by a mysterious old man called Silas. Eve and Sam are crossing the forest when they suddenly find Ty about to self-delete. Eve convinces him not to do it and Ty joins them, saying he remembers seeing the ambulance. Night falls by the time they find it and luckily there are plenty of antibiotics that they take. At that moment Eve looks at the hills and realizes something, they look exactly like the outskirts of LA. Suddenly a saber-toothed tiger appears nearby and starts chasing them, but after a few failed shots, Ty manages to kill it. Sadly there's a second tiger coming, so the trio runs away and hides under a hill to wait. When they think the beast is gone, they come out again, but sadly the tiger shows up and Sam gets knocked off the hill. Ty and Eve keep on running and when the tiger is about to get them, it falls into a hole. It turns out to be a hunting trap, meaning there must be other people in this land. Afterward they go looking for Sam and find him at the bottom of the hill. His back is injured, so they have to help him walk. In just a few moments, Sam realizes that he's slowing the group, so he tells Eve to leave alone with the medicine to save Josh, who has been getting worse. After she leaves, Sam tells Ty he can guess he's sick, so Ty admits he has cancer and that's why he had been trying to self-delete. Suddenly they hear a noise and are found by Lucas. Meanwhile Marybeth finds the car with the powder and recognizes the plate. She starts asking people about a man with a green jacket and meets sisters Veronica and Lily, who is mute. Their father was killed by the wolves and Veronica wants to do a proper grave, so Scott helps Veronica follow the paw prints and bloodstains through the forest in hopes of finding the body. Scott finds a bunch of camels about to approach a tar pit, so he immediately runs to scare them away to save them. Afterward, Veronica finally finds her dad's body lying on the ground surrounded by rocks forming a hand, meaning someone left him there. After burying the body, they return to the camp, and Veronica aggressively scolds Lily for hanging out with the other survivors. It turns out Lily can talk, but Veronica forbids her too. Moments later, Eve arrives at the camp and gives Josh the medicine, which quickly helps stabilize him. 
Soon Lucas and Ty bring Sam back to the camp and it's revealed Lucas is the guy Mary Beth was looking for because he's her son, but he doesn't want anything to do with her. Back to Gavin, he's approached by two agents who take him to see Sophia and Markman, who stole Eve's ring. They've confirmed it came from 10,000 BC, meaning the sinkhole takes people to the past. Sophia explains that three years ago, a similar sinkhole appeared in the desert and that the same day, Gavin had his piloting accident near the same area. Then Sophia shows him a special airplane designed to go into the sinkhole, which will be piloted by Gavin's best friend Levi. After using Gavin's visions as a guide to decide on a flight plan, the friends have a private chat and Gavin asks Levi to give Eve the ring back, causing Levi to admit that after the divorce, he and Eve had a fling. The next day, the survivors are arguing over the provisions when suddenly a giant beast attacks the camp. Everyone runs to hide and they can only watch the animal eat all their food before going away. Scott is an anthropologist and explains that this beast hasn't been seen since 10,000 BC, meaning they're in the past version of LA. Eve backs him up and says they'll need to hunt for more food, but Lucas doesn't believe them and leaves to find a way out. Mary Beth follows him into the woods and eventually they discover that the hunting trap has been reset, so someone must be nearby. At the camp, Sam tells Riley he can't feel his legs and she must help him with an injection on his spine. They're going to need something to numb the pain, so Scott brings the recreational powder. Once Sam is sedated, Riley gets very nervous because she never did this before, but Josh supports her and she manages to finish the procedure successfully. When Sam wakes up, his legs are already feeling better. Meanwhile Eve and Ty go into the forest to hunt for rabbits, only to be found by a bear. They immediately run away and hide in a cave, but unfortunately the bear causes a bunch of rocks to fall and block the entrance. Suddenly they bump into Lucas and Mary Beth, who enter the cave to look for the hunter. They explore the place together and eventually find a small body of water. Ty dives in and discovers there's a way out on the other side, so everyone jumps in to follow him. On the other side of the cave, they find a man that has been dead for years. It seems he came from the future like them and judging by the gun by his side, he self-deleted. The group then finally finds an exit and once outside, they find tons of edible mushrooms. They take it all back to camp, where Lucas discovers his powder is gone. Back to the present, Levi takes off in the plane, but when he reaches the green light, an engine catches on fire and they lose connection, so they assume he's dead. However Levi has also reached the past and survived with his parachute. At the camp, the survivors see the green light get bigger and the plane crashing in the distance. They put together a group to go looking for it, and soon they bump into Levi, who uses his radar to find the signal from his plane. They have to cross a lake to reach it, but Riley ends up being attacked by a huge snake. Levi dives in to save her and quickly kills the snake with his gun. After lots of walking, they finally find the plane, but unfortunately it isn't working. Levi could fix it, but he doesn't have the parts. The group collects the supplies Levi brought but before they leave, the airplane receives a signal from three miles away and they decide to follow it. When they stop to have dinner, Riley shares the story of how they saved his father, and now Lucas knows Scott got rid of the rest of his stash. Levi gives Eve the ring and informs her Gavin isn't crazy because his visions are real. In the present, another earthquake hits LA and Gavin has visions of Levi with Eve. He rushes to see Markman and finds a file with his name in the office containing a picture of Sophia with Dr. Rebecca that says fourth event, meaning this has happened multiple times and the government hit it. Markman informs him that there won't be another rescue mission, so a disappointed Gavin leaves after stealing the file. Afterward he and Izzy go looking for Rebecca, who is hiding with Sophia and reveals she has a second plane. When the last sinkhole appeared in a desert, a group of scientists was sent to explore it, but the green light disappeared and the group was trapped in the past. Sophia and Rebecca were close to that group, which included Sophia's fiancé Diana, this is why they built a plane in secret to rescue them. Gavin obviously agrees to fly it and Rebecca will go with him. In the camp, Lily and Veronica have an argument, and when Veronica slaps Lily, she runs away into the forest. The girl suddenly sees something that makes her step back in fear and she trips over a body. Her screams are heard by the others, who immediately come over and confirm it's one of their camp members. Sam is also shocked to notice the guy has died of electrocution. Since Ty is a psychiatrist, he convinces Veronica to let him communicate with Lily. At first she only nods to answer, but soon she snaps and speaks aloud, saying she saw an old man with a handprint on his back. Before she can say more, Veronica takes her away, unaware that Silas is watching them. Back to the team, they're shocked to come across a village and they split to investigate the area. Eve and Levi enter a temple with a handprint, only to find a body inside another hand made of rocks. Levi reveals that his mission is also to find the scientists who disappeared three years ago and reveals a picture to prove this body was one of them. After Levi takes the guy's radio, Eve sees the fire was put out recently, so they need to get out. In another building, Lucas gets aggressive with Scott, demanding to know where his stash is. Suddenly they are attacked by a villager, who fights Lucas until he knocks him down. Then the guy reveals he speaks English and also captures Scott. At the same time, Josh and Riley end up in a room with a secret door that leads them outside the village, but the door closes behind them. 
At that moment the villagers come back and see the intruders, so they begin chasing after them while shooting arrows. Levi and Eve run to hide inside a house and discover a group of kids, who let him hide behind the furniture. Isaiah tells the chasing villagers that he saw nobody, and afterward he explains to Levi and Eve that his grandfather Silas says the sky people are dangerous. Eve convinces him they're nice, and Isaiah agrees to show them a way out. Meanwhile Scott and Lucas wake up all tied up next to the dead body from before. Luckily Lucas has a lighter that they use to burn the ropes and escape. Outside, Josh and Riley are chased down the hills, but they manage to hide in between the rocks and escape safely. They leave a phone with music near the gate to distract the guards, then they go back inside to reunite with the others as they also are running. Isaiah shows them a hole in the wall but on their way out, they're surrounded by Silas and his men. However Para stops them from attacking and the group gets to finally escape. The team eventually returns to the camp and shares what happened. Afterward, Ty notices Lily sitting alone and convinces her to share her worries. Lily reveals that Veronica isn't her sister, actually she was kidnapped by her and her father a year ago. When Veronica finds them, she realizes the truth is out and runs away. Back in the present, Rebecca takes Gavin and Izzy to a dig site where they think the survivor's camp used to be. This theory comes from the fact they found a letter from Eve, who is writing it at that moment in the past. In the letter, she apologizes for not believing his visions and explains that the green light is closing up, meaning Gavin needs to fly soon. In the camp, Levi keeps trying the radio he found and is surprised to get a reply from Diana, who is stuck in the past too. Her plane also crashed but she may have some parts, so Levi and Eve agree to go find her using a jeep some survivors managed to fix. They manage to get to the beach next morning and Diana receives them with her gun out, but it's only her trauma reacting and soon she becomes friendly. After she explains she arrived with the group from three years ago, they check her plane and are very happy to notice she has the parts they need. Back to Gavin's group, they're discovered by Markman, who wants to cancel their rescue plan. At that moment the diggers announce they've found something underground, it's Rebecca's plane and there are bodies in it, which means Levi will fail his mission. Gavin wants to fly in and warn them, but Markman arrests him instead. Moments later, Sophia bails them out, and Gavin asks for a way to send a message to the past. In the past, Lily notices Veronica hasn't come back and confesses to Ty that she had been a kidnapped victim too, so her attitude comes from trauma. Ty decides to leave the camp to look for her and finds her by her fake father's grave. He explains that he only wants to help and that she's also a victim so she won't go to jail, but as soon as he turns around, Veronica knocks him out with a stick. Meanwhile Eve and the pilots come back and announce they'll fix the plane. There's not enough space for everyone, so they agree to draw names to make it fair. Josh is chosen and so is Lucas, who wants his stash back before leaving and makes Scott take him to the spot where he hid it. The duo starts digging but instead of finding the powder, they're shocked to find a chest filled with gold from the American Civil War. Suddenly, something falls from the sky and lands nearby. The group rushes to check on it and discovers a military drone containing a video message from Gavin warning them their plane will crash and promising he'll rescue them soon with his own plane. Only Eve and Mary Beth believe him, the others are too desperate to go home and agree to advance with the plan. Desperate to save their sons, Eve and Mary Beth corner Levi and Diana at gunpoint to stop them from flying the plane. This triggers Diana's trauma and she fires her gun, accidentally setting fire to the plane's tank. Mary Beth reacts in self-defense and shoots back, severely hurting her. The mothers and Levi immediately take Diana to the camp, but Sam's efforts aren't enough and she dies. Back in the present, Markman and his team discover the missing drone and go to Rebecca's place, but Izzy and Sophia distract them while Gavin and Rebecca take off on the plane. When they're about to enter the sinkhole, Markman threatens to shoot the plane down with missiles. Rebecca refuses to die without solving the mystery and tells Gavin to remember a certain date before jumping out with a parachute. Gavin doesn't want to give up, but Izzy calls him to beg him not to die and Gavin aborts the mission. The survivors lose all hope as they watch the green light disappear. The next morning, the survivors tell Mary Beth they don't feel safe around her anymore after Diana's death. Mary Beth tries to explain it was self-defense, but Lucas cuts in saying she killed his father using the same excuse. The survivors are furious and vote for both women to be exiled from the camp, and Eve is devastated to see even Josh vote against her. Meanwhile Ty wakes up and sees Para nearby, who runs toward him and saves him from a snake before he passes out again. Para brings him to a cave to take care of his injuries and explains her people aren't bad, they just protect their home from sky people because they often appear here and attack. At that moment they notice a snowstorm is coming, so they'll have to stay in the cave for a while. In the present, Gavin is arrested again but soon released after he signs a non-disclosure agreement. Later he meets Sophia and mentions the date Rebecca said, saying that's the day he was adopted. He doesn't have any memories from before that day, so maybe finding his blood family may lead them to an explanation. Sophia does some research and discovers the address of the church that called child services on him, so they immediately pay a visit. They meet an old woman who remembers Gavin, explaining they found him by the side of the road looking scared. She also mentions he hadn't been alone, there was a 12-year-old girl with him. Since neither of them remembered anything, the church called child services. Gavin is surprised because he doesn't remember a girl, and Sophia promises to find her. 
Sometime later, Sophia obtains the data on where the little girl is now and they go to see her, but unfortunately she isn't home. They do find her art though, and Gavin is shocked to see a statue of the hand from his visions. In the camp, Scott sees the signs of a storm too as birds fly away in fear. While the survivors try to find ways to take shelter, Mary Beth says goodbye to Lucas before leaving. However the wind breaks a pole that is about to hit a shelter Lucas is in, so Mary Beth rushes to save him, only for both of them to get stuck under all the rubble. The survivors try to move the debris away, but it's too heavy and any movement may crush the duo inside. In the meantime, Lucas is having a panic attack, so Mary Beth calms him down like she used to do when he was a child. Then she explains why she shot his father, it turns out he worked selling the powder too, and he made a deal with the cops to hand them Lucas as the man behind the whole operation in exchange for his freedom. Mary Beth shot him to save her son, which Lucas actually appreciates now. Outside, people are running for shelter as the storm gets worse, yet Eve refuses to stop digging. Scott mentions explosions and Sam gets an idea, using the defibrillator and the gunpowder from Levi's bullets, he manages to build an explosive. They immediately use it to create a hole in the debris, getting Mary Beth and Lucas out just in time before the structure crumbles. When the storm ends, the survivors decide that after seeing Mary Beth and Eve act like heroes, they're allowed to stay after all and Josh apologizes to his mom. In the cave, Para and Ty say goodbye to each other, and Ty returns to the camp. Suddenly Lily sees someone running in the forest and alerts the adults, who immediately run after the mysterious person. It turns out to be Isaiah, who falls and hurts his hand. They bring him to the camp and Eve suggests they use a kid to start a diplomatic mission. Eve, Levi, Isaiah, and Ty make their way to the village on the jeep, and during the trip, Isaiah reveals he's been watching them all this time, that's why he knows they're good people. Soon the jeep is surrounded by locals who take them back to the village, where Ty explains to Para that they only want to learn how to farm and build shelters to survive. Para decides they can give them a chance and the classes soon begin. While teaching them about farming, Para also shares their history. The green light first appeared 60 years ago and the people who arrived were so violent that they started a war. After both sides lost lots of men, both communities eventually merged and shared culture and languages. In the camp, Lily is approached by Veronica, who has been hiding in a cave nearby. She tries to take Lily away, but Mary Beth and Sam stop her and handcuff her inside a car. However Veronica starts having trouble breathing and they have to get her out so Sam can do CPR to save her. Back in the village, Levi sneaks around and finds the wallet of the electrocuted guy in Silas' room. He calls Silas out, but the old man says the guy had already been dead when he got there. Para backs him up, saying she's found bodies in similar conditions in the woods before and that the handprint is a symbol of protection against that. At that moment they learn that someone has kidnapped Isaiah, so the group splits to find him. Eventually Silas finds the kid and recognizes the kidnapper, it's Rebecca, who refuses to let go of Isaiah because he has a destiny to fulfill. A furious Silas stabs Rebecca and escapes with Isaiah, but soon the others find her and take her back to the village. Levi recognizes her from the picture from the last team, but Rebecca only wants to talk to Eve. Meanwhile Isaiah hides with Silas, who is in shock because Rebecca told him his real name is Gavin. When Silas leaves for a moment to find some food, Isaiah decides to escape. In the present, Gavin, Sophia, and Izzy find the address of where the girl lives nowadays and pay her a visit. Gavin feels like he's been here before, and in the yard, they discover a sinkhole. Suddenly Gavin gets a vision from Isaiah's perspective and sees the scar on the child's hand, which matches his own. This means they're the same person and Gavin's visions are actually memories. At the same time, Eve also learns that Isaiah and Gavin are the same person from Rebecca. Isaiah has to walk into the green light and appear in 1988 to be adopted, but Silas is trying to stop this to keep his grandson. If Isaiah doesn't go to the future, Gavin won't exist and Eve's children will disappear, so Eve must fund Isaiah and take him to a time hole in Topanga. Then Rebecca's health starts getting worse, so Levi leaves to get Sam. In the meantime, Scott is outside the camp having a smoke when he sees a cow. He rushes back to ask for help catching the animal, but nobody believes him. After Levi arrives to take Sam, Josh, and Riley away, Scott decides to search for the cow alone. Veronica feels bad for him and decides to go along, explaining she grew up on a farm. After lots of walking and bonding, they manage to find the cow and bring it back to the camp. The survivors are excited to have milk and now respect Veronica and Scott more. In the village, Rebecca begins feeling better thanks to Sam and explains they need to hurry because the time light to 1988 will close in less than a day. The group decides to split and go looking for Isaiah. After lots of wandering around and following footprints, Josh takes the jeep down a path and comes across Isaiah about to be attacked by a tiger. With no hesitation, Josh speeds up and runs over the animal to kill it. As Levi and Eve join them, they notice Isaiah's wound is scarred the same as Gavin's, proving Rebecca's story. They decide to take the child to Topanga, unaware that Silas is following them. Back to Gavin's group, they're suddenly found by the girl, who is now an adult called Ella. She doesn't believe the story about time traveling holes and doesn't remember her days before adoption either, but she admits she's been having visions since the hole appeared in LA. 
She still refuses to help them though, so the group will have to find some proof to convince her. Gavin goes back to the dig site and finds a rock with an insect that he saw on Ella's paintings, so he steals it before he gets caught by the guards. Meanwhile Rebecca feels better and sneaks into Silas' room to steal a notebook. When Sam and Riley find her, they accept to take her to the camp. At the same time, Eve's group notices Silas is bringing their men to look for them, so they immediately run away. They find a dead end at a cliff, so they have no choice but to cross a very thin bridge. Eve and Isaiah cross first, but at that moment, Silas and his men arrive, so Levi cuts the ropes of the bridge to save the kid. Silas takes the duo hostage and tells Eve to bring Isaiah to the end of the ravine for an exchange or he'll kill her son. In the present, Gavin gives Ella the stone, which causes her to have a vision from Lily's perspective. It turns out Ella and Lily are the same person, so Lily should be walking into the time hole too. Back at the camp, Rebecca tells everyone about the hole in Topanga that leads to 1988 and she knows all this because she and Silas used to be part of the team that made the experiment that opened the time holes. The survivors must decide if they want to go back but to a different year, and Scott wants to stay to solve the mystery because he's found a barcode on the cow. Rebecca approaches Lily and gives her a page from Silas' notebook, saying it's a very important mission. Seconds later, Lily leaves the camp and asks Veronica to come with her. Unfortunately after walking for a while, Veronica accidentally steps into a bear trap and her injured leg is stuck. Lily tries to break the trap with a rock to no avail, so she tells Veronica that she'll come back after giving the paper to Isaiah as she promised. Back to Ella, she shows everyone the clothes she was wearing when she was found as a kid, and they find Rebecca's paper in her pocket. Sophia quickly realizes it's a map of all the time holes that already exist or will form soon, and the one in Seattle opens tomorrow. This will cause massive earthquakes that will kill thousands of people, so they need to warn someone. In the meantime, Eve and Isaiah meet with Ty and Para, who agree to go back to camp for help. However they're taking too long, so Eve tells Isaiah to run to the time hole while she goes back for Josh and Levi. Silas finds her and reveals he knows her children will disappear, but he doesn't care and makes his men capture her. Nearby, Isaiah also comes closer and is found by a villager, but at that moment Ty and Para show up with reinforcements. After Sam knocks the guy out, he tells Riley, Mary Beth, and Lucas to take Isaiah to the hole while the others plan the rescue. The group quickly attacks Silas' men and a fight ensues, causing Silas to run away. Eve manages to cut her ropes off and frees Josh and Levi, who join the fight and help win it. However Josh is growing weak because his existence is at risk, and in the present, Lizzie feels the same pain. Ara and Ty leave to chase Silas while the others look for the rest of the group. Not far from there, Isaiah's group comes across another villager who wants to stop them. Riley takes the kid away while Mary Beth shoots him on the shoulder, but the guy jumps on her anyway. They struggle a bit before Lucas pushes the guy away from his mother, and when he's about to get stabbed, Eve's group finds them and Sam shoots the villager. Then they realize that Mary Beth got stabbed during the fight, and since she doesn't want to slow them down, she stays back with Lucas while the others keep going. Lucas helps her mom walk for a while, but eventually she can't take it anymore and dies. Back to Eve's group, they take a shortcut Para told them about, which is a cave filled with tart pits. There's a ladder on top of a pit, so Josh makes a very risky jump to reach it and bring it closer. He goes up first and Isaiah quickly follows him, but when Eve tries to do it, the ladder breaks. Josh catches her mom just in time and brings her up, so now the three of them will have to keep going without the others. After lots of walking, they finally make it out and find the green light on top of a mountain. In the present, Gavin and Sophia go to see Markman to convince him to evacuate the area because of the upcoming earthquake. While the city is taken over by law enforcement, Gavin's group notices that the map is fading and the seismic signals are shifting away from Seattle into a campground. The group travels there to start another evacuation and find another sinkhole in the middle of the woods. However it's too small to fly a plane through it. At that moment both Josh and Izzy feel so weak they can't stand. Josh tells Eve and Isaiah to go on without him, only for Silas to suddenly show up and push Eve to take the boy. Eve hits him with a stick and Isaiah runs to her, causing Silas to threaten Joshua however Ty and Parr also show up and point a gun at Silas, causing him to finally surrender. Eve and Isaiah run to the time hole, and as soon as Isaiah walks into the green light, Josh and Izzy begin feeling better. At that moment Lily shows up and runs to the green light too, which is already tiny. Josh and Riley try to comfort Lily, but at the last second, the green light absorbs the three of them before finally disappearing. In the present, Gavin remembers his crossing so he decides to jump into the hole, so Izzy and Ella go with him. When they wake up, they find themselves on a beach and see a mammoth, confirming they've traveled to the past. In the camp, Rebecca tells Scott that she has answers and convinces him to take her to a nearby mountain. There Scott is shocked to see a modern building, which Rebecca says was her creation. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.